Hello everyone! Welcome paint partiers! It is Saturday, August the 8th at almost 2 o'clock. We are just starting up to uh, get ready for our live paint party today. We're going to be painting Let's Go to the Forest, so a Van Gogh inspired uh, painting. So you can get your paint supplies ready and I'm going to um, get started just a little bit after two o'clock just to make sure we have everyone who wants to join in on the fun today. Um, so what I would suggest you guys to do um, if you are joining in and painting with me is um, grab um, a screenshot of the picture we're painting. So either from here, this would be kind of weird, or you can grab it from the post from our page from yesterday. Um, so just have it available. I have it here on my um, laptop beside me. So I'll be um, using that as reference as we're painting. Okay, so just grab it um, from the post from yesterday and um, just have it available. The reason I say that is because as I'm going through, you might paint slower, you might paint faster. Um, and uh, I want you to have your own reference available. When I start setting up my camera, you're only gonna be able to see my canvas as I'm painting. You won't have the reference as well. So if I would suggest you grab that reference um, now so you have it available for you. Hi, Tanya. Yeah, I'm so excited. Tanya writes, Yahoo. I'm very excited for this one. This one is um, a little challenging. Obviously acrylics are fantastic and fun to use but they can be a little challenging for blending so if you're new to that I will show you how to do it it can be really easy too um, and it can flow but it can you know kind of um, kind of be interesting but I'll show you some techniques to try to get a good um, a blend going to get that sky and this nice loopy colorful fun look um, you I am going to be using, um, so the colors that I always have um, are just our primary colors. You can paint anything if you have your red and your uh, blue and your yellow. Um, and I also have a black and a white. So if you have at least these five paints, then you are good to go and you'll be able to create it. Um, I also have some pre-mixed paint as well. Um, so um, in this painting, you'll see that there's a lot of orange, there's pinks, there's greens. So if you have a pre-mixed, like as I do, I have a pre-mixed orange and I have a pre-mixed pink and a pre-mixed green, that will just make it a little bit easier so you don't have to be blending um, and making those colors as you go. Um, but if you don't, that's fine too because I'll talk you through how to mix them as we do this as well. Okay. When we get started, um, the first thing we're going to get started with is that beautiful sky. So we always start with whatever's furthest in our picture um, and then we'll um, layer it up as we go. Hi Doreen from North Bay, fantastic. Wonder how the, how's the weather out there? It's really beautiful here today in Ajax. The weather is beautiful. My husband and I went for a walk today. Um, it was really nice. My, uh, my mom has my son for the first time in five months, I think. <laughs> he was used to sleeping over there all the time and we obviously were isolating and so now that we've expanded our bubble, um, now that um, my mom can now be back in that group, which is fantastic. So he's there for the weekend and I think he was super happy to get rid of us. <laughs> he was out the door so fast. Um, so it was nice. So we had a nice walk together, which was good. Um, hey Alex, glad you're joining today. Hi Anita. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, I can see why you're going to be. Anita says she's going to be doing this painting later. She's going on a picnic. I completely understand. It's a beautiful day. Um, for any of you who might be in that boat as well, um, this video will be up. So once the live is complete, um, it will post uh, to the page and it will be up. I'm not planning to take it down, so you can do whatever you want. Um, similarly, I have a few people have told me I go a little bit fast. Um, so if you find that, um, I try to do it for the interest of time because it does usually take about two hours to do these, um, it tends to, um, and I, I try to keep it within that time limit. So if you find that is happening, um, just, uh, you may want to watch, rewatch the video or go at your pace and then wait till the end and then you can rewatch the video. Awesome. Oh, I'm glad the weather's amazing in North Bay too, Doreen says. That's fantastic. 
So yeah, if anyone is joining in, feel free to say hi um, before we get started. I know once we get started, it's a little bit tricky for you guys to like bounce in and, and uh, say things. Um, once we get started as well, if you guys need anything, um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I will keep an eye on them as we go. Um, I sometimes do get into what I'm doing, so I might miss it immediately, but I will um, keep an eye on it. Similarly, um, this is communal, so I'm gonna show you my approach to this, how I would do it. Um, however, if you have a different strategy or you wanna try something and it works or it fails, <laughs> feel free to like jump in and say like, you know, try this out guys, this worked really well. Um, I want you guys to, I want, like this is all of us. Um, I want you to have fun painting with me. I enjoy painting, I am not a professional by any extent, I just really love it. Um, so I might not use the correct terms for things, but we will get a beautiful painting done by the end of it, and I want you guys to enjoy it. Awesome. All right, we have some more people. Oh, right. oh Renata, hello. She's in Barrie, fantastic. Marlissa from Aurelia, I know you are excited about this. I, I, I'm excited that you're joining today. We have Peterborough as well. Fantastic, hi Patty. Oh, and you're in Stony Creek, Anita. Awesome. That's like near Hamilton, that the west side. And Michelle, hello from Pickering. Oh, congratulations on your 11th anniversary. Her and her husband are celebrating their 11th anniversary today. Congratulations, Michelle. That's fantastic. I think you're the one who told me that. Yeah, I think we talked last time and you said that. That's fantastic. I'm glad you're back and joining. I get my hair up, so once I start painting, my hair likes to um, make appearances in our video, so I'll get that going. I also have a water container ready to go. So my water container ready to go here. I have some paper towel in a pile. I have some paint brushes. Really, we need three. That's what I go with. I usually have a few more available just because I like to move it around a bit. Um, but the three main ones I have, so we have, I have like a, a bigger one for more coverage, a medium size, and I have, this one, it doesn't look very thin, but when I put water on it, it will thin itself out a little bit. It looks a little bit ragged actually, <laughs> but this one has a nice, um, it kind of holds like a pencil, so it actually allows me to be more detailed. I think it's going to be nice when we do some of the leaves, the detailed like leaves and all the different colors, I think it'll be fun. Um, these brushes, uh, when I say large, medium, and small, it's really in relation to my canvas size. So this is a canvas board. Um, it is um, 11 by 14, and I got them from Amazon in a pack of like, I think 10 or 12. So that's what I use. I find it really easy to store. I, I don't like to paint over my canvases. Like I like to keep them <laughs> forever because I'm a bit of a control freak. So I need, I need them to be small to store in a nice pile. Um, and uh, yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to be getting them for Christmas this year because uh, that would be happening. Um, but yeah, and then I also have some other paintbrushes, another medium one that's a bit softer. And then I have another thin one as well, um, just as backup because I like to do that. The brushes I use are um, like flat. They're kind of like thicker bristles. Um, I really like them. I had like the control on them, but really whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever gives you that control and, and you have to kind of feel it out. Okay, I'm going to be able to say hi to you. Let's... Let's see. Yay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I knew that. There's a Starbucks connection. Yay. Awesome. Rula. Hi, Rula from Mississauga. And Sherry's here from Chico. Awesome. Hi, Nisha. And Linda's here from Niagara on the Lake. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. So I'm going to get some paint going on my palette, which is beautifully dirty. As always, I refuse to clean it at this point. So let's take a, another look quickly at what we're gonna, our painting for today. Grabbed it, grab the screenshot from yesterday. Um, grab uh, the picture so you have it available for reference. We're gonna start with the colors right in the back. Okay, so do they warp? Oh, the um, the canvases? I have No, I haven't had any problem with that, Linda. And they're actually really great for um, framing. It's kind of funny. I actually just put one of my other paintings in a frame. I got this frame, I don't know, I think someone found it maybe at a yard sale at some point, and it fits beautifully, and it's nice and thin, and it looks so pretty. Maybe try to frame a canvas is like, I think super 
expensive and you don't even want to do it. So it's great for framing. I actually really like it. It looks really fancy that way. Like a real professional. All right, so we're gonna start with the back. Um, I think what we're gonna start with, when I look at the, let's get white, blue, maybe some yellow. Let's get white, blue, and yellow started on your palette. Quite a bit of blue and quite a bit of white. I think we're gonna use a lot of white to kind of get our canvas primed up. I will change the camera in a moment just while I pour this paint and there's nothing on my canvas, you guys can see me instead. All right. Okay, get some yellow. I'm gonna need more white than that, but we'll start with that. All right. Cool, let's see. Um, hi, Anna. What size? Is that for the um, the canvas board? The canvas board is uh, 11 by 14, and I'm using it in like a horizontal way. I've also realized too that um, the way you guys are viewing me, it like flips it. So everyone who watches thinks I'm left-handed, but I'm actually right-handed. So the picture's also gonna look flipped. So when you take that image, if you're looking from the uh, <laughs> the one on the screen, you're gonna be like, why is she painting it on the wrong side? And it's, it's literally the technology's flipping it. So that's the annoying thing about this process, just as another side point. Awesome. I'm going to now move the camera so you guys can see my canvas better and I'm going to adjust it. Oh, wow. That's super dark today. I think I'm the shadow. Yeah, I am. Okay. I'll go on the side. Maybe. Ooh, shoot. Maybe that's not going to work. Okay. We're going to figure this out. I'm going to have to go on that side. I think. Okay. I'm going to rearrange myself a bit because I having me as a shadow is not going to be helpful. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go on this side. And then maybe like that. I think that's going to be better. And I'm going to get this closer in a moment. Bear with me. I misjudged the light coming into my room today. Okay. Okay, one moment. this more straight. Okay, there we go. That's much better. Yeah, no shadow. Beautiful. Just gonna get my computer set up again. Change things up a bit. Okay. There we go. All right. I think you're on a weird angle, but we're gonna go with that. Okay, let's get started. All right, so let's start it off. I'm gonna use my big old brush and I'm gonna start off while deciding where I want um, our light source to be. So I'm gonna have my white paint. You're not gonna really even see it at this point on the canvas, but let's just, decide how we want, where we want that to be. So I'm gonna want it about here. That's where, and I wanna just get paint on here in that circle so that when I start to put that blue, it's gonna pull some of that white, okay? So this is where I want my light source to live, okay? And I'm gonna continue with that white just a little bit out. So I'm just basically putting some white paint in this like circular way around. Cause when we add our blue, it's gonna pick up some of that white and it's going to play with our blue color really nicely and make it a little bit lighter. So I basically have the white circle, which you can't really see. And I have canvas with nothing. And then I have white paint. I'm putting like a circle around it with white paint. Okay, and I'm bringing it around because that blue is going to come like foom. Okay, so I'm just going to add some white paint at the bottom just so that when I put some blue, it's going to pull and it's going to create a cool blending effect. Okay, and I do want it, um, you can put, if, even if you put a bit more than less, it's, it's fine. So I'm just going to put white, okay, like this. So I have white paint in a motion on my canvas 
circling the white light. Okay. I'm going to get a dab of the blue. Ooh, okay. So right now my it's is centered on my screen, JC. So I it might be if you have it on portrait or if you have it on um what do you call it? landscape, sometimes it cuts off for some reason. Someone had mentioned that before. So it might be a rotation thing because it is centered on um, the screen. Okay, so now we're gonna, with the blue, I'm gonna start putting some of this blue in. And we're gonna have fun with it. And we're going to bring it in. So I'm putting it around on top of the white that I just added. Okay, and we're gonna bring it all around. We're going to a little bit more. I'm going to bring it a little closer to our light source. Okay, we're going to do that again. Okay, but I'm not going to get the center because you want to keep it white. Okay. Let's get this blue on here. Okay, and just try to have your strokes follow this like curved way around. Like don't make them really angular or straight. Try to have it all curved, okay? And we're, it's still gonna be lighter on the top there. I'm gonna have to wait till that dries, but that's okay. Okay. And I'm gonna bring this blue down here too. bring the blue all the way down. So I just did this way. So instead of pre-mixing like a light blue on my palette, by adding the white right onto my canvas, it allowed me to get a lighter blue through my brush strokes right on there. Which I find is A, easier and more fun. <laughs> Okay. And I think the blue here, I made it go down straight, but it actually goes up like this. So, my bad. Let me bring it up on my canvas. Blue actually comes up. Yeah. Okay. So again, so this is our version of the inspiration image so yours might look different the size of the canvas might be a little bit different depending how big your light source is depending how big you want to put your trees so keep that in mind that you can make this your own the idea is just to get the the vibe of the way the paint is applied on here like it has that Van Gogh type of vibe to it right and that's what we want to create okay, I'm just putting some more white on top of this blue and just blending a little bit more in here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry off a little bit and then I'm going to add uh, more white and then I'm going to add yellow. I'm not going to touch, even think about touching my yellow yet because if I put my yellow and it touches my blue, I'm going to get green and that's not going to create the effect that we want. Okay. So feel free just to play with your blue. You can put a little bit more white in it. You can put a little bit more of the blue. I kind of want it to be a little streaky with color. So I'm just going to go in with white as it's wet. And I'm just going to add some like brush strokes in the direction that this is flowing just to make it have some movement. It kind of like looks like a wave right now. I like it. Okay, so the paint is still wet. So when I'm adding the white, it kind of, every time I want the white to really stand out, I have to put a little bit more on my brush for the white to stand out. And then as the more I sweep it, the more it blends in with the blue and it's 
and it's not so strong with the white, but you get to see some of the streaks that are happening with it, right? Ooh, Marlissa says there's sales this week at Michael's for brushes and paints. That is a great tip. Thank you for that. That's fantastic. I've been like, so, I've been doing so much Amazon shopping. It'd be nice to actually, I mean, I guess I can go online to Michael's too, I suppose, but I'm looking forward to getting back into a store. actually quite a bit here it's gonna take a little while for that to dry so I'm just gonna let that happen you guys can keep going putting some little strokes putting making this blue look cool um, also you may want to just make sure like depending on how opaque or not your canvas is uh, or the paint on the canvases so I sometimes like to let it dry for a little bit and then I put in some more just so that it um, I can't really see the canvas show through. And I'm just going with like a darker blue just to, same thing I did with like the white, but I'm just, I wanna put a little bit of bluish kind of streaks into it. And of course we're gonna be painting like way more on top of this, but this will just, the texture's gonna come through, which is the fun part. And if you haven't already, um, as we're waiting for some other things to dry, paint the sides. I have a canvas board, so it's not like as, I guess, needed. If you have canvas, definitely paint the sides. Um, but I still like to have it complete because sometimes I will put this in like a, a little like easel or something. And you can see the sides. When you're painting the sides, um, if you touch the front, you might have to just do a little touch up. So just watch that and then just touch it up. Okay. I should do the bottom too, but I'm not going to do that right yet. Okay, cool. So it's going to take a little bit because it's still pretty darn wet because we did put on that layer of white first and then we put on the blue. I'm just going to clean off this big brush. When I went in with my blue, I brought in some streaks onto my white and I wanna just clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, get more white on my palette because I'm almost out of it. We're gonna be using, I think, a lot of white. Well, I think so anyways, we'll see. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back in with my clean and just bright and white in here just smooth off these ends here there that's better I like that it looked a little ragged before Gonna take a little bit longer to dry okay so I want this area here before um, I the next step will be that I want to get in and put in um, some white on top of this because I, I made the blue a little bit too wide I want it to be a bit more concentrated um, but I need to wait until this fully dries before I get that blue in there so perhaps perhaps we can play with the pink then because I think we can do that and it will work to our advantage I um, so either you can grab some red and white and make your own pink on your um, on your uh, palette um, alternately you could put white paint down and then add a little bit of red and mix it right on your canvas and then you can blend it into the blue a little bit and it'll turn a little purplish as you do it um, I'm going to use uh, my pre-mixed pink that I have um, just for the sake of simplicity, but you can um, use just the red and the white if you so desire. So I think I'm still going to start off by putting some white 
down first. And this side is already more dry than my circle area. And then I'm gonna grab this pink and I'm gonna pop it in. Okay, and I'm gonna go over my blue a little bit. And I'm getting a little bit of white on top of that too, so it kind of blends in to the blues. I put white on my brush. And then I'm just bringing that pink. Because the blue is pretty dry, but there's still a little, like a few little elements that still were wet. So it's going to allow us to blend it in nicely. Just got to put a little bit more pink. So I'm just going to alternate between getting my pink on my brush, putting some white, and then just blending it into the blue. And it already has a bit of a purplish vibe because as your brush goes, it's picking up the color. So on my brush right now, there's already like some purple because it's created it just from touching the blue and touching the pink, right? So, and I'm gonna just pull it in a little bit. I know it's, it's, it's pretty dark, you can't really see, but I, I wanna make it, bring it in a little bit further, bring some of that purpley color in because I like it, it's pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit of the same that I did before. I'm just gonna get a little bit of white and just like touch it a little bit. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna go into our orange, right? Um, let me think. I wanna try, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna put in some more pink here and I'm gonna get the yellow I want to just see what happens yeah you know what I kind of that's creating a really nice bright orange so yeah I think I want to use that instead of my pre-mixed one so yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm getting my pink and then I'm just gonna continue it over and then I'm putting some of that yellow into it and that's going to transition really nicely when we go into just yellow. Where's that going? That's going around. So I gotta start bringing it this way. Okay, so I'm just going to get some more pink. And then I'm getting some yellow and going right on top of what I just painted. So basically I'm like mixing this orangey color right on my canvas. Okay. And then to blend it a bit into this blue, I'm going to use white. So on the same brush, I'm just going to touch it with white. And then I'm just going to kind of dab it into this blue area just, just to kind of like soften it slightly. Like that. Yeah, that's working. Okay, cool. That's good. Not as brilliant. It's a bit more of a duller orange. So I don't know. I might see if I put in couple little lines of the um, pre-mixed orange for pops. I'm going to put some white first. I might end up with a more pastel-y sky. I'm just going in and putting in a little bit of the white, same like we did with in the blue and in the pink. I'm just streaking some white in here while it's still wet. The transition was a little strong, so I'm just softening that too. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. Now, I think this is at a point where mm, it's still a little wet there. Ah, I'm scared. I just don't want it to become like a mushy, yucky color. Okay, so let's 
Let's see, I'm gonna test it a little bit in this corner because I do want this yellowy orangey to come this way. Yeah, this part is dry, which is good. I'm just gonna bring in some of my yellow and my pink and I'm mixing it. Or you could use pre-mixed orange or you could mix red and yellow together and make an orange too, that works as well. And then when you wanna lighten it, lighten it with the yellow like get it lighter with the yellow paint instead of using a white and then I use the white to put some streaks into it to make it look a little bit funky. Is that as far as I want to go? Yeah because I still want to get white in here too. Just getting that orange on that side. Salmon color maybe is more? Whatever. It's good. It's good. Okay gonna clean off that brush and I want some more yellow on my palette and do I have enough white I think I need more white already again yeah all right I'm gonna go for the white Ugh. lighter in here so I'm just gonna brighten it I don't want I, I put too much of blue because I want this to go from white to yellow to that orange so I'm starting again with putting some white to decide where how much into the blue I want to go which is probably about there realistically I went a little too crazy with my blue when I started Okay. I want the white to come here. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to go over this with white and see if it's pulling any blue cuz I put a little bit too much like I said. But I think it's dry enough that it's going to help us. That's good. Okay. And I'm going to continue with the white in here. I'm just filling this area with white paint. And then I'm going to get some yellow in a moment or two. I just don't want it to become green, and I feel like that's going to happen a little bit at least. I'm just trying to keep these strokes going in the same kind of flowy way. If you have some harsh lines, it's okay. We can soften them in a little bit. Okay. So mine are a little harsh. I'm not digging that too much. I'm just going to clean off my brush again in case there's some remnants. There is some blue, obviously, in my white. So I'm going to make it a little green. And if it does, we'll either go with it. It might look all right. If it does not, then I'll let it dry and then I'll fix it. Again, this is all for fun and it's trial and error too, so we're going to play with it. So I have yellow on my brush. So let's put that into this white. So it's making a very light. I'm just bringing that over into my orange a little bit just so that it blends nicely and I think I've already kind of achieved that part which is good so that's nice and I'm just gonna want to sweep it around and I'm gonna go into this white area and sweep it in. It's 
kind of soften that so it almost goes seamlessly from this white to this yellow. And I don't have any yellow in this transition, so I'm going to go boom and pop in some yellow right there. Okay, I'm going to pull it into my white this way and pull it into that orangey that way. All right. How's it looking for you guys? I'll give you guys a moment um, while it dry mine dries off a little bit. What I would say would be if you're ready to do like some more, like if you're ready kind of following where I'm at and you want to continue up, um, I would kind of do the same type of process that I did down here where I kind of just put like little streaks of white or blue just to like make it pop. I'll clean off my brush and then you may want to do the same into the orange or the yellow just to make it come out a little bit. Um, as it's drying I'm also looking to see it's a little harsh on my painting here. So I'd like to try to um, adjust that and fix that up a little bit. So I'm going to try to play with that a bit just so it's not so... much of a like a hard line from one color to the next I need more white again on my palette that's how much <laughs> so much white today so much white today okay let's put white I'm just gonna see if I can use the white to maybe blend a little bit here not even just blend it just kind of will soften that line yeah like that looks good like it's not like really blending that much it's kind of soften that line so it doesn't look so super hard and that's what I prefer that looks good okay cool and I'm kind of happy that this isn't I, you know what this is good that it's not super pure white because in our inspiration image um, the the feeling or the the little leaves that are on the trees there are there's some like white leaves that that or that, that that kind of those elements kind of circle around here on top of that white so having it kind of this white with this blue undertone putting the pure white on top I think is going to be able to pop a little bit more where I don't think we'd be able to see it if it was well we wouldn't be able to if they're all the same color of course you can't see it um so yeah so I think that actually worked my favor which is nice I'm just going to touch, ooh, maybe I shouldn't use this brush. I want to just touch up that blue circle in the middle, but I'm not going to use my big old fat brush for it because I know it's not going to cooperate properly. It's going to be too big. I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm just going to touch up a little bit. In here. Ooh, there's not enough paint on that brush. No, there's not. So I'm just making kind of a lighter blue on my palette to kind of try to match this somehow. And I just want to, with my lighter brush, I'm just gonna clean up the line here a little bit. I don't really like how that is. I want it to still look a little bit softer blended into it. I'm just gonna see what I can do. With acrylic, the more layers that you do, the more depth your painting has. So that's always fun. However, if it's really thick paint, it can be a little bit annoying to wait to make it dry between each layer. And if it's too thick, sometimes it pulls a little bit. Like right now it's happening a bit. It's kind of working because it's blending. So that, again, acrylic strange because I find some of, a lot of the, uh, The annoyances of it can also be a benefit of it. <laughs> so I always have like a love hate relationship with it where I'm like, oh, it's pulling. And then I look and I'm like, oh, it's looking good. Okay, let's keep going. So it's playing with it, really. Or vice versa. Sometimes I do it and I'm like, ah, what am I doing? So then you just have to like 
train stuff to stop touching it and then you can go back and then you can fix it. The nice thing about acrylic is you can pretty much fix anything, which is great. And we're using the inspiration of a, like a, a, an, an artist who is all about the feeling and the vibe and the impression of what you get from the image. So don't stress about um, how you, how it's looking. Like you want to get that vibe. So you, if you are digging, making some of these like smaller strokes and you're liking how that color's coming, maybe you want to pull that out and put like little strokes of, of pink and white and like make it play a little bit. So you can kind of play with it however you want to, um, to get the vibe, to get the Van Gogh vibe on your, on your painting. I am going to put a little bit and maybe get the pre-made orange and see if it pops this a little bit more. We'll see. I don't know. I, I was, I'm, I dig, I'm digging the color that I made with it, which is neat. see Catherine um, will the video yes so the video will be available later today so once this live is complete you'll be able to access the video from the videos page we also have I have all the other videos we've ever done is all there too so you can watch them whenever you so desire and I have no plans to take them down so yeah they're there for your convenience oh no I tend to drop things in my paint every single class I do. And uh, JC has a tip too. She says on other classes, I have seen teachers use a clean, damp brush to blend their colors and soften stuff. Perfect. Yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you for sharing that, JC. That definitely helps. So I think the brush usually, yeah, so usually there's, there's like a big, sometimes they're with like makeup brushes. They really work nicely. Like they're very big, soft, and like you can get that going. And if it's slightly damp, not with too much water at all it can really help with that too so that's a really great point thanks for sharing okay i want to put in like i said i want to do a little bit more and put a little bit of lines in i'm just going to wet one of my finer brushes and i'm just getting the pre-made orange and i'm going to put in a few little streaky lines to see if i like it i have to keep in mind too that the sky is going to be pretty much covered with like trees and stuff um, but I still want to play with it a little bit, so I'm going to do it a little bit. So I'm just going to put in a few little lines with this. This orange is definitely bright, which is nice. And then I think I'm going to kind of use what um, JC had mentioned to soften it up a bit because I don't want the lines to be to this level. I'm going to get one of my other brushes just to blend it in slightly. But not... Um, not like a, a big fat one. I'm just going to use maybe one of, maybe even this one. This one is slightly damp too, so I'm going to just get a little bit of these colors. I just didn't want, I don't want it to be like super bright, but I do like the little streakiness of that orange. That orange makes it pop more. This brush is not a soft brush, so <laughs> it definitely has a bit more of a harder feel and it kind of pulls the paint a bit, but it is creating an effect that I, I like. So I just put in some bright orange and I just went over, I put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white on the tip just so it doesn't, um, yeah, there you go. So it's not super orange. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. That looks nice. Okay. So keep on playing with your sky for as long or as little as you want. Um, I think the more like little strokies of color that you put in and you do a little bit of that blending and put in some more and have these like so we can see like an orange line, a white line, like that's when you're going to feel more of these uh, the vibes kind of kick in. Um, so yeah, I definitely uh, would encourage that if you're if you're digging it, if you're digging that groove of it. We're gonna be doing a lot of that with the trees. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna be moving on to that in a moment or two. I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit more time just to finish touching up your sky. Okay. 
Oh, Patty says she's starting to feel some Van Gogh vibes. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. That's great. I love Van Gogh. I, I, get, I, guess that's, that's a, I guess that's a thing that everyone, most people say, but I, I love, love, love his vibe. I love it. Oh shoot, I have a coffee. When I moved my whole setup, I left my coffee behind it. As I always do, I drink it cold anyways when I'm here, but that's okay. <laughs> it always tastes yummy. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see how it's going. So all my blue and my pink and even the orange I just did, so I used a, a very like dry brush so most of it is pretty that was a little wet but yeah it's already pretty dry which is awesome so i'll give you guys a little bit more um mila says she loves my little bob ross on top of the easel so darn cute yeah thank you so much my uh my husband got this little guy just like a little bobblehead it like moves but I, I, it kind of broke off one day it was <laughs> but anyways <laughs> but yeah he's pretty cute he actually has a button and he says phrases but the speaker is kind of funky and now it's really creepy <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really press that anymore but my son was playing with it my son's eight and um a, a, a day or two later or something he had said something or I think it was even on a paint party actually but he was like um, oh, uh, whenever you need, you need to have some dark to have some light. And I was like, what? How are you being so deep right now? <laughs> and he got the quote from the Bob Ross figure. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. But I thought it was him and he totally played it too. He was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. like as if he had like just come up with it himself. And I was like, yeah, he's pretty funny. Stealing Bob Ross quotes. Out of the zone. I don't know what that means for his personality as he grows up older. <laughs> Resourceful, maybe. That's a positive way. All right. So in the image, um, now we're going to have, we have trees to do, basically. So we have some lovely um, green trees that are, I would say, in the foreground. Um, and then we have um, some trunks all over the place with brightly covered, uh, brightly covered with leaves. Um, and they are more in the background. Now, in this picture, um, let me just share that with you again. How do I do that? So in um, the inspiration image, if you notice, the original image, um, it looks like they probably painted the green trees first. And then they were like, ooh, I think I want to add some more trees in the background. Um, and so I think that's what, how they did it from the way it looks, but we are going to add the colorful, at least where we want them to live and put on some of their colorful branches first, I think, and then do the green trees after. So I think they should be more in the foreground. So we're going to change that up a little bit. Sorry, I'm holding in my hands. It's a little bit wobbly. I will put this down again in case anyone is getting like like sick from me moving my camera around <laughs> all right so we got that back on this colorful sky so granted like maybe I should have just made this like full-on bright orange hmm it does look really nice I'm like second-guessing myself I might add a little bit more pink actually that's the problem when I wait a little bit too long then I add more and then I Keep going. I'm just gonna put a little bit of brighter pink in here. Same type of thing. I'm just gonna put. I feel like it's a little too pastelly, and I want it to be a little bit more. Boom. Let's get that in a little bit. Why not? Why not? Cooler. 
Again, I know there's going to be trees covering it, but I can't help myself. Okay. All right. So the way these trees are going to live. So let's see. Um, in this painting as well, the trunks seem to be done in dark green. Not a super fan of that. I think I'm just going to use black for the trunks or brown if you have brown. But I might just stick with, I think I'm just going to go with black to mark out where I want those tree trunks to live. So I'm going to get some black on my canvas. My canvas, oh my gosh. My palette is what I meant to say. I'm going to get my thinner brush. I don't want this one. Yeah. Just going to wet it a little bit. My thin brush that kind of looked a little disheveled okay so these um we're gonna put in the trunks of the trees that have all the colorful colorful leaves on it okay so in the foreground like here not foreground i shouldn't call it the foreground on this side of the canvas these are very they're very high they come up very tall so they're gonna come from like right from the bottom all the way up and then there's gonna be another one that shoots off there's gonna be a few some are going to start a little bit higher, like from the bottom, okay? Uh, right now I'm just kind of thinking about where I want to put some of them. So I'm going to put probably like two of them here. One's going to kind of come up and end about there. The other one's going to come up and end about there. I might put a little bit of an offshoot. Um, and then I'm, and then the way, and because they're going to go in the back, when we put the green trees in, you we can then put them right on top and it's going to look pretty cool, I think. Um, and as we get closer to this swoop, they're not going to be as high. So the first couple of trees we're going to put, the, the, the trunks, are going to come all the way almost to the top. The next set are going to come maybe like one third of the way down here. The next set's going to only come maybe like a third of the way up. The next one's going to be even lower. And then there's going to be one that comes up kind of like guiding this blue line okay and then those leaves are going to shoot in that way so that's how we're that's how we're going to approach this next step of putting in these trunks so what i'm going to do is i have black paint uh to use for the trunks um in the original image they used it looks like a dark green so you can feel free to use whatever you want to feel comfortable with that's totally up to you um brown green whatever you want i'm just going to put a little bit of water in the black just so um, it becomes very easy for it to flow, but not too much water. If you put too much water, what happens is then it might just drip, which is a cool technique for some paintings, but I would not recommend that for this. Um, and again, this is our inspiration, so if you put them in a spot that's different than the original, that's totally, totally your prerogative, okay? So let's start off with one that's going to be here these trees are again the impression of trees so um they can just go like like that you can make them however you want when you make a noise um when you're putting black on something um it helps any of the like fear that you might be having by putting black on colors that you are really digging so i strongly suggest making noises like that and I want this to be a little bit more opaque, so I'm just going to bring it up more. And I want it tilting out like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. Okay. Do I want this guy to be a bit thicker? I don't know if I do. I think I'm, I'm digging him like that. Okay. And I'm going to put another guy. Just another guy. Just maybe this one's going to start here, I think, and it's going to come up here. Okay, so that's going to be our first two trees are going to be there. The next ones are going to be here, and they're going to come up about there. That's going to be the tallest they are, and they're going to kind of follow a similar um, flow. Oh, well, these bristles are not really my friend, I don't think. I don't know, I think I need to, I don't, this brush is not, I don't like the vibe of it. The bristles are being a little bit too renegade and I'm not digging it. I feel like they're gonna end up 
messing up my my vibe my groove I'm just gonna switch over to one of my other more fine brushes and see if I like the feeling of it a bit more yeah if see one thing is obviously technique like how you feel like how you can actually do things but some of it is your tools <laughs> if the tool and you are not driving like you need to switch the tool yeah like this brush already feels better yeah I think this one's gonna be more more control I need more control okay Yeah, way better. Okay, that's what I want. I want you to have more control. Okay. Try a little, little offshoot here. I'm gonna have like a little offshoot here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that guy's gonna live there. Okay. And then we have another one that's gonna live about a third of the way up now. So this one's gonna come about here and here that got a little bit funky I talked about control and this uh, brush betrayed me. It was totally me. I, my hand moved wrong. It's okay. We'll um, cover it up with lots of colorful leaves. some more branches all right let's uh, do the next ones so the next one we're gonna have one that's gonna come about here A little thicker. No, I'm gonna leave that. Okay. And then I'm gonna make sure. Oh, good. Okay. And then um, we want to have some that come off from the side here, and they're gonna look, come a bit higher. So there's one that. Oh, I think I'm in just a weird spot. Okay. So for me, I'm trying to keep this always in view, so you have that. Move your canvas around wherever it's most convenient for you have the control, so you can have the best stroke that you can have. Okay. For me, it's kind of uh, weird because I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So when I make weird mistakes like that, I'm just going to go with it. But for you, you can have more smooth lines, hopefully. kind of works. And there's another one that's coming off from here. Okay. Awesome. So that's where those are going to live. They're going to have the basis there. I'm going to clean off this brush. All right. And the next step is we are going to start putting a bunch of lovely little colorful leaves all over these trees. So let's take a look. So in the image, the leaves are colored orange, pink, yellow, um, like a little bit of like a lighter orange, a bunch of different colors, some purpley ones. They kind of come through so beautifully. 
Um, the yellow ones really stand out a lot in this area here. So that's really cool. So let's start playing with that. So I saw some pink on my palette. I have a little bit of orange. I have a little bit of yellow. Um, so I'm just going to start thinking about how I want to layer that and how we want to start playing with it. There is also some of those leaves that are in this area here too, like in the background. And also when we do this, I want to kind of get like the background going and then we're going to, once we put those leaves on for those trees um, and they dry off, then we're going to put in the green trees on top. And we can always go back in after and add more colorful leaves if there are certain areas that we want to emphasize. But I think it's important to try to have them behind the green trees and the green trees for them to, to kind of stand out. Um, so yeah, so just think of it that way. So don't, don't be stressed or anything about um, not having enough of those colorful leaves or, or whatnot because we can go back to them too. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit uh, more time to check the chat as well. Amit has asked if I can please wait. Okay, I'm just, uh, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna give it a second before I start with those colorful leaves. Um, but yeah, we can start putting some colors on your palette if you need to do a bit of a refresh for them. So pinks and yellows and oranges Maybe some purples if you so desire. I still have some white too, which I might use to mix. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna think about which brush, which one is gonna be my friend for this project, this part. Let me think, are you gonna work for me? medium brush or thin brush mm -mm 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 -mm. okay I think what I'm going to do before we start on those colorful leaves is I'm going to just swap out my paint water since it is a uh, very murky so I would suggest if you are also waiting before we start on those leaves swap out your water if it's getting a little bit gross. So I'll be back in like a moment to do that. Perfect. Awesome. I just got some clean water. All right. So now let's get started on the leaves. So the leaves are really, again, this is your impression. So this is how your, your vibe, the feel of it. So pick a brush that you are feeling pretty comfortable with. It doesn't have to be super fine. I'm gonna use this one that was giving me a bit of trouble when I was doing um, the straight lines, but I think might be okay because when we're doing leaves, they can be more organic and kind of funky. And let's pick whatever color you want to start with. Um, I think I'm going to go with the pinks because the pinks are the ones I think that are more in the background. So I'll do the pinks or the orange first. So I'm going to get some pink on my brush. Put a good amount on. And then now let's start to put some pink on. Okay? So um, when you do this, you're just going to kind of kind of do anything you want really. So you're just going to like dab it on like that. I have a little bit too much water on my brush. So try to make sure you have enough pink and just kind of bring them. I kind of like it if you start it like at the tip of where it is and then bring it in and then make it a little bit fatter, like push it down a little bit. So start it here and then push it down a bit. When you get closer, I think that looks cool. And I want them all to uh, be upright. So the kind of be like trying to reach the sun, right? So you're gonna put them, you can put some, remember to put some of them like in front of the branch. Make some of them bigger, make some of them smaller. Some of them don't even have to be attached. Like that one looked kind of weird. 
They don't have to be fully, they don't have to be attached. <laughs> they could just be like, oh, right there. Okay. So let's just put a bunch of pink flowers. Let's go crazy. Flowers, leaves. They could be flowers, make them flowering trees. You do whatever you want. Again, this is your painting. If you want to put like little flowers and make it like a really intricate painting, like do it. Almost dropped my brush again. Okay. Let's just put these in. Some more control over it. It's kind of going the opposite way. I like it the other way, but. Okay. So I'm bringing them down pretty low. You can bring them wherever you want to. It kind of does go like not right, right to the bottom, but if you bring them to the bottom, that's fine too. I'm gonna bring some more. And again, you're gonna have those green trees around too, so they're gonna cover up some of this. I don't wanna put some in here. And there's also some that are here, so I'm just gonna put some leaves that are like, maybe there's a branch that we can't see. They're all in that corner. Okay, we're gonna do it more here, some more here. and just feel it like just have fun with it and put them on if the brush is kind of being funky change a brush use a different brush try a different one and see if you like the way it looks this isn't about getting a perfect shape again it's just the the feeling of it get the color on there Make it feel like fun, bright, colorful leaves. So I'm making, I'm trying to make these ones a little, I'm trying to keep in mind that these ones are a little bit smaller. Like some of those are a little bigger. This little tree is a bit smaller. I'm trying to keep that in mind as I do it. Okay. And we're going to put some here too. This is the first layer of color, so we're gonna still put orange and yellow and maybe like a really light yellow, like almost a white, okay? Cool, so pretty already. Like, I'm really getting excited, okay. I hope you guys are too. This is the fun part. Like when you get to put all the colors on like this, it's great. I'm more excited about doing this than I am about the green <laughs> trees. <laughs> okay, I'm just cleaning off my brush. So those are the pink. We're gonna do the same thing with all the other colors. So let's, uh, if you wanna jump in, you can. You can also decide, um, you might, if you end up putting the orange ones on top and there's some pink ones that are still wet that's going to affect it a little bit but it might also look pretty cool so you can start off i'm going to just give it a moment because i want it to dry just a touch before i put on like another color of leaves on top but i'm okay with it blending a bit i just want to ensure i have the integrity of most of the pink that i put on A little wet. Okay, so I'm going to start dipping my brush into my orange. If you don't have a premixed orange, then you can go ahead and mix uh, red and yellow. I would probably put like two parts yellow, one part red. If you're mixing your own, otherwise you can use a pre-mixed one. I wouldn't go like super dark red. I want to make it really dark. Let's keep it kind of lighter. Okay. And so now we're going to do kind of the same thing with the orange. Okay. We're going to put some. I'm going to follow the same idea. 
and they're gonna come over the leaves. Some of them are attached to the leaves, uh, the branches. Some of them are not. Some of them are in front of the branches. Some of them are in front of the pink leaves. In this area, we have quite a bit of leaves. So I'm just gonna pop these orange ones in. I need more orange ready. I have a tendency of, of making, um, of being very uniform. So I have to watch myself. So I noticed like here, for example, like I intentionally put one on top of the pink because I realized I was avoiding putting them on top of the other leaves. So as you're going, watch for some of your own like patterns that you kind of do without realizing it, even when you're trying to be random. Um, and just see if you can catch yourself with it so that you can try to make it look a bit more natural because when it should just kind of be a bit random, like maybe some on top of the pink one, some of them not touching it at all, some of them a little bigger, some of them a little smaller. Okay, so there's most of the oranges. I don't know if I want to put more. So once you've kind of done it, just take a step back and see if you want to add any more. Again, this process doesn't have to end in a particular point. Um, you can, we can do this now and then you can go back and put more in later. So keep that in mind. I'm just gonna clean off that brush so I can get ready to do some yellow in a moment or two. But again, I want to wait a moment before I put the next color so that it can really stand out on its own as much as possible. So I'm gonna do the yellow next. And just like the pure yellow and then I think I'm gonna mix some white in with a bit of yellow to make it kind of like a, just kind of like an off white. And then I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do like four layers of leaves all over these trees. Yeah, I have some globiness, which I like. That's gonna, when it dries, it'll, it'll still have a bit of a texture to it, which is kind of good. I like, I always, anyways. If you get any um, acrylic paint on your clothes, you wanna try to get it off of it right away or else it will become permanent. So I just got a little drop of yellow. So keep that in mind. If you get the paint on you, make sure you wash it right away. Once we do these leaves, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do the white leaves around the, uh, the light source here. So we'll do that after we do the yellow and the light yellow leaves. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So if you guys are, if you are already there, cool. So grab some yellow on your brush and let's do the same thing, but let's put some yellow leaves on here. So again, 
put some on their own. My yellow, I'm not a fan of my yellow paint. I find it very um, thin. I do use like dollar store paint, so I am definitely at a disadvantage. So if you're using a more of a brand name paint, maybe it's, it's a bit more um, opaque for you. but I might have to, so you might want to take a look too, depending on how it's going on. Or maybe one of your other paint colors is kind of doing that. But if you're finding that one's a bit um, too see-through, you might want to go back over those colors just to give it a bit more bulk, you know? Okay, and again, these leaves, you can kind of, you can do them whichever way you want. I'm just putting them wherever I want to, basically. So just kind of like take a, there isn't too much yellow in this area. I'm gonna keep it more in the pink area. So I'm not gonna to go too much and I am gonna still touch it. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. Okay. So you can kind of be random and you can also be a little strategic too. So if you notice like other leaves that you don't like, <laughs> or if the, the trunk kind of looks funky, then you can use this opportunity to, when you're putting more leaves on top, that's what you can do. Just cover up the little mistakes or things you don't like. That's the sneaky artist way. I am going in and getting like paint on my brush almost like every time I do it. Like I kind of may maybe do two leaves and then I get more paint. And that's also because of the opaque thing. Like I don't want it to, I want you to look at that and be like, oh, that's one yellow leaf. I don't want you to be like, oh, I can see the other leaves underneath it, you know? Okay, and you can have the leaves come up, like if you look, they're not even on the branch, especially the lighter ones. So I'm bringing them up like even higher than where the branch ends, for especially that one that goes around the, the curve. The other ones do kind of end where the, the trunks end with the exception of, of this area here, where now I'm adding a few more randomly. Um, but that does continue in a nice curve without any leaves. I can't, you know what? I, I think that point might be where I want it to, to live. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a look again. This seems very like, I want some more coming out this way. Yeah, I do. There we go. Go nuts, have fun. Put leaves anywhere you want. Maybe, unless you don't want them on your pants, then don't, don't put them on your pants. <laughs> okay. I didn't really have to clean that off, I realized, because I want to put some white into this yellow, and I'm going to make, I just want it to be like pretty much almost white with like a tinge of yellow. That's the next and the last leaf color that I'm going to be using on here. Okay, so I've just made that, and now let's put some of these on. Whoa, I think I have a cat hair on there, and it's 
affecting my control issues. And if you decide that you want to go in and add, you know, purple leaves, if you want to go in and add green, you can make them whatever colors you want. Um, you don't have to follow this color palette. This is, this is just uh, the one that's in the inspiration image. So I'm just using that one, but you can do whatever you want. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You can put purple fla you can put purple leaves in here. You can add flowers in here. You can draw a bird in here. You can do whatever you want. This is your painting, right? So just think of what you makes you happy, and you can change it up. If you want to. That one looks weird. That's okay. We'll go with it. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I think I'm okay with that. I want it to be a little bit lighter in here. Okay. I'll leave that for now. Good. Amit says it's looking good. Awesome. I don't know if you mean my painting's looking good or if that means your painting is looking good. I hope both of ours are looking good. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm digging it. I think I think it's uh it, it has a really um happy vibe and I hope you guys are enjoying yours as well and, and uh, having a fun time with this. If you're not having fun then then you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> no, no, no. It can be frustrating too but um, really like just enjoy the process. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Cool. So while we let all of our colorful leaves pretty much dry um, we're gonna go in and put in those like the white leaves around our light source to kind of have that like starry night kind of you know image but then it also brings in this other element here as well so let's we're gonna basically do the same thing we were just doing only we're gonna use white paint and we're gonna just do some little flicks around um, and they kind of go in kind of like an wreath so you just want to have all of the flicks kind of like pretend there's like a vine almost like imagine like the line like look at where the white and the blue so imagine there's a line so that's where your like trunk is so to speak and all of the leaves are gonna come out from that line so I would say start wherever the line starts and then bring them out okay in white that would be the best way to do it I think okay and again some are gonna be bigger some are gonna be smaller um, so I'm using pure white okay so my line is kind of coming around that way uh, it's kind of interesting I kind of want it to be up higher a little bit you know what mine's gonna start up here a bit because it it does it should be separate from this guy so I'm gonna just go like this like this like this like this Okay. 
And some are going to come out a little bit more than others. Some are going to be smaller and fatter. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. Aye, it's okay. I don't think I need to wait for that to dry. I'm going to take some off anyway. Okay. As it gets in, it gets smaller. So I'm just gonna make it a little, the, those little lines or little leaves are smaller as it comes in towards the center and it gets a little bigger as it comes out. Okay, so that already has the, the vibe of it. Okay, so just, I always like to start off, like this one I actually didn't really, I kind of just, just winged it essentially <laughs> but what I always like to do is I like to start off smaller so be a bit more like con like you know stay a little closer to a smaller way and then and then make it larger as you as you go actually just by adding that it just yeah, it really made it look cool okay I'm just gonna go in and just put a little bit more because some of it Again, I'm, I am a little too uniform sometimes, so I just want to mess up my uniformity a bit. Okay. That is so cool. It looks so pretty. You know, maybe there's a leaf that just kind of was like a random one that just kind of, a few of them, you know, renegade leaves. Yeah, that one's just random. It just flew off that way. Cool. Awesome. There we go. Yay. Pretty good, guys. And I'm just going to do a time check. So it is 323. Not bad. Not bad bad honestly thought all of that was going to take us much longer so now we have in my timeline about half an hour or so left to do our big four our big uh, green trees in the front so I think we'll be pretty good with time so that's very exciting super exciting so since I've done that lovely white uh, leaves around our, our light source kind of vibe which looks so pretty um, it's given enough time for some of those colorful leaves to dry I'm gonna give it another moment uh, just in case you guys um, need a little bit more time for that before I move on to the trees that are in the foreground so yeah hopefully everyone is uh, still doing well let me know. Um, you can let me know if you're ready to move on to the next step. Actually, if if it's convenient, you guys can just give me like a thumbs up um, and let me know if you're ready to move on to the next step. That would be cool. I'll just keep an eye for that. And then I will um, start on the trees once I see a few of those maybe. Cool. So yeah, it should be really nice. So we're going to Oh, I see a thumbs up. Thank you. Whoever sent that. Okay, cool. Yep, there's already some coming through. Awesome, guys. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like you guys are ready to start on our trees. Perfect. All right. So let's go back to our image and let's take a look at, that's the inspiration image. So we have the trees there. So the trees are going to follow a similar, um, Thanks, Patty. Um, a similar um, flow as the um, the trees that we already just did, the colorful trees with the leaves. So we're going to be doing um, those um, in the same kind of way. So they're going to be just the same height is going to follow the same pattern. Um, we're going to start with a darker green, and then we're going to build them up to make have the lighter and put the highlights on them as well. Okay. The tops of the trees are really thin. The bottoms have larger strokes. So if you've 
done other uh, paint parties with me before when we've done trees like this we kind of just use one brush and then we kind of like dab to either side and we get that effect different with this because we we're going to try to have each stroke um, and really layer on the colors and to have each impression of the stroke come out so it's going to be a little bit different um, but lots of fun okay so you'll need to get your green paint so either let me make sure my camera is set up again there we go so you can either make your own green paint so if you're making your own green paint I would suggest to use two parts blue one part yellow um, and mix that up uh, mix quite a bit of it up and then you can add a little bit of black if you want to darken it up Alternatively, if you have a pre-mixed green, I do. So I'm going to be using my pre-mixed green, again, just for the sake of convenience. Um, and I'm going to lighten it up um, or with probably with yellow if I want to, but I think I'm going to keep the color that's out of the bottle. It's pretty, like it's like a medium green. I want to darken it up slightly, actually. So I'm going to put a little bit of black into it. Let me see, which one am I gonna use? Yeah, I'm gonna still use my more fine brush, I think, to do some of those. So let's get some black, and then I'm just gonna throw black paint into this green. Only a little bit. Don't put a lot. If you put a lot of black paint, the green will become black. But I literally just got like a little bit on my brush, and then I put it on. So that's kind of like, I have like a, I don't know if you guys can see it, okay? Okay. Wow. Spilling water everywhere. Tijo, yes. So this video will be available. So when you, um, after this is done, it will be on the site and you can watch whenever you want. I'm not planning to take it down. So you can, yeah, you can watch whenever you want. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm so silly. What I'd like to do first, actually, I can still use this color. But I do kind of want to like figure out where those trees are going to live. So we want to still put in their trunks. So let's do that. Even with this dark green color, let's do that first before we start playing with the leaves. Because I, I was getting a little bit too ahead of myself. Okay, so this big old tree on the side here is going to kind of loop in up here. And it's going to come down. So the trunk is almost comes off the page-ish. Right? It doesn't really matter if there's actually a trunk or not. It's just to give us a guide. Then there's another one that lives here. Okay. Yeah. So silly. I almost forgot to put in some trunks so I could actually know where to paint them. Okay. There's another one that lives here. And they all have a slight curve. Like they're kind of curving towards this, this sun source. And that also contributes to this like circular motion of the painting. So just keep that in mind when you're putting in these trunks, okay? Um, the one that's the furthest one is over here and it goes like this-ish. Okay. And it doesn't matter if these are thick or thin or not because we're gonna be putting leaves all over them. And this one isn't as tall and it lives like there. So that's if we're following this painting exactly. And now that makes me think there's no green tree in here. So I might go back later and add some more colorful little leaves or put some more stuff in them. Or maybe put a little green tree in. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to keep it like that. Okay, cool. We got our trunks in. So now we know what we're doing. Important, important. All right. So let's make sure we have some of that dark green. And essentially... We're going to have the same approach as when we did all of these colorful leaves, but it's going to be slightly different. So we're going to start with our dark green, and then we're going to put in this brush strokes. We're going to have like little strokes at the top. They're going to follow more of a, they're going to kind of come like down. So you're going to kind of put them in. They're small at the top. Sorry, my hand was in the way, I think. Okay. And they just kind of come down. And then as you come further down, they get bigger, maybe a little thicker. Okay. And again, this is the first coat, the first layer. 
So we wanna get this dark green on, but you're gonna be putting a lot on here, right? You're gonna put some other colors right on top. You're gonna to get the regular green or the, we're gonna put maybe even, we may even put a little bit of black maybe to give it a bit more depth potentially in some spots. I'm not sure yet, maybe. Okay. So let's just build, and some of these are really big and, okay. All right, at the bottom, like at the bottom, I can't even see blue. So let's, lots of green. So let's put in, let's go, let's enjoy. Let's put in nice broad strokes. This tree is living right here. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> sounded like I said, Cajun. Okay, so so this, um, and as I'm going, so now I've, I've just basically started to pull on the same tree. I pulled some of that medium green, and I'm just now popping some of that medium green on here in some spots, and it's already adding a little bit of dimension to it. And I'm just grabbing that medium green every time. When I'm doing this, I'm trying to so when a tree lives it's not just like branches aren't just going to either side right like there's some branches coming towards you that you can't even see so put in a few that are like almost like straight down I know it sounds kind of weird but then it will look a little bit more realistic and a little more full So I'm doing it slightly different because I just kind of pulled, and that was just kind of by fluke because I kind of just grabbed my brush and it actually worked nicely, which is why now I'm doing it a little bit lighter green in here too on top of the darker one we just put in. Okay. And I want to cover most of the blue. I might still get some of the darker green. Okay, so this tree now has two kind of shades going on. It has that shadow green, and then it also has some of the the bright, the original green that was from the bottle that I put on top. We're still gonna do more to it, but not right yet, okay? Wow, I used a lot of green on one tree. <laughs> I need to replenish that, absolutely. And let's get a little bit more black into this green so I can make it a dark green again so we can do the next tree. So, dark green. Okay, next tree, similar again. So we're gonna just start small little strokes at the top. Take a look at our inspiration image to see how the branches go. Some of them come up. Okay. okay some of them come out more. So that gives it a nice dark coating. So cute. Okay. And now I'm going to get the actual green that came from the bottle. And I'm just going to basically dip my brush in. Touch. Wah! That was a lot. That's okay. We can play with it. And touch these. Maybe not put so much that time on my... I said that and I think I like literally like scooped a bunch. <laughs> okay, there you go. It has a nice... Oh, so cute. Oh, the contrast between the brightness and the green is awesome. Now, we're still, after these dry a little bit more, I'm we're still going to put... Um, do I want to dry a little bit more actually? Hold on a second. I don't know if I want to put in the yellow highlights now when it's still a little bit wet. Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Maybe. So I think I'm going to wait a beat before I go to the next one. 
And while there's still some wetness here, I do want to already start putting in a little bit of those yellow highlights because I think it's going to look better that way. And I'm going to show you and talk you through how I'm going to do that because you don't want it just to be like a bunch of different, a bunch of the colors like all mixed together. But I just clean off my same brush. I'm going to get the yellow paint now on my brush. And so the highlight, only going to hit the tree on the one side. So this big tree here, you're only going to have some yellow highlight on this side of the tree, not on this side of the tree. That's going to stay darker. Same with this one here. The highlight's going to hit that, that side of the tree. That's where the sunlight's coming towards it, okay? So I have some yellow paint on my brush, and then I'm going to just go like, whoop. And I'm only going to do, like, I did, like, what, like, four streaks or so before I had to put more paint on. And... I might just put like little dabs on where I think those um, <laughs> leaves live. I don't want it to be super uniform either. Okay, so that tree. Okay, and it actually comes down. This tree is very big. And this one, there's a tree here. I'm just getting the yellow and I'm just touching where the sunlight would touch. And the top there's smaller strokes, the bottom there might be bigger strokes. Yeah, that's good. And the reason why I like it when it was still kind of wet was because I'm still trying to keep the integrity of the yellow, but then it then it blends in to some of the green, so it just looks a little bit more natural, I think. Okay? Cool. So those two trees are pretty good. And if you find that when you put in that yellow, like that highlight, if you find that you put in too much of it, you can always go back in with some green and just like touch the same area and it will just dull it down slightly and it will look really nice. Because again, like when sunlight hits something, it doesn't just hit it perfectly. There's still some like shadows in there because there's so many little elements of the leaves that um, you won't see right away right there'll be some shadow natural shadows that will be created as well so like what I mean is if I go back right now and get a little bit of green and then I just kind of like touch some of the yellow I feel like it almost makes it like more realistic because in a tree or like I said like you're not gonna know all the little intricacies like this isn't like just like a branch and it's like solid right or you know well, I guess a branch is solid but <laughs> I don't know if I'm just, just, just describing myself properly it's not like a solid hit of light so I think that just kind of makes it look a bit more realistic okay cool awesome oh thank you Carol Carol says beautiful I agree I'm really digging this <laughs> This is very fun. I'm having so much fun. I'm so glad. Honestly, any of these ones that, um, if any of the, of these uh, three paintings had one, I would have been saying that because I I love love Van Gogh and this technique is so much fun to do. Okay, so I think I need still to make a little bit more of this dark green, and we're gonna go to the next tree. Okay, so same. We're doing the exact same technique. Once again, this tree is not as curvy. It's kind of more straight. So again, we're just gonna put in some So 
as I go down, as you see, I'm just making these strokes bigger. Sometimes they cover in front of the tree. So much black on that one, oh my. Okay. I'm just gonna get the regular green color and I'm just gonna top of this shadow a little bit darker green. I'm gonna try to just hit like some of those areas where I can still see the background. I want to cover that up a little bit. So pretty. Awesome. I love it. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go to the next one over here. Let's do some more shadowy to it, and then we'll go back and put in some highlights once we do the second tree, and then we'll do the last one afterwards. This one's smaller. I don't know if this brush is going to allow me to be... There we go. Okay, and let's get the regular green. When I do that, I'm kind of going right over the lines I made, but then I'm also trying to keep in mind that some branches are coming straight at me, so I'm trying to put some lines that cross over the middle to make it look a little bit more not like real, I guess. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean off that brush and I'm going to put some yellow highlights on those two trees before the paint dries and then we'll do the last tree after. Wowie wowie and there we go. Okay so again so this one has a little bit And again, it's the impression of this light hitting the tree, right? So don't stress. If you put something on, you're like, ah, it's okay. Just go with it. Okay. This one's kind of like on the other side because put down the middle of it, but then more on this side. So once you get to this, these trees, the light is going to be more on the inside. Then, yeah, so the, basically all the light source is here. So the inside of the trees have it here. And then the same thing on that side. The inside of the tree is going to have it, but not so much at the bottom. I think that one's going to stay more like that. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to put any more highlight on it as it goes down. Okay, now let's do this last tree on this side here. Yep. More black, make some more dark green. Okay. Hopefully, you guys are still doing well and can still see it okay. Had a weird glare, so I think it's still visible. Okay, so here, this guy, 
Um, I think this guy comes up a little higher, so I'm just gonna make it so. funny this one actually kind of reminds me we did um, a painting a few weeks back called I think it was called tall trees and circle sky <laughs> and this reminds me a lot of that one so if you're digging this one and you want to try something else later I would suggest you checking out that video so I think you'll dig it it's not as it's not as colorful um, but some of the techniques are really cool in it Okay, so I did the dark, so I'm just going back and putting in the... regular green on top. Okay, nice. Uh, Carol, yes. Carol says she loves the tall trees and circle sky. Yeah, that one was that one was really pretty. That was a really fun one to do too. It had a cool perspective because it was like a perspective from like, um, it was like a portrait style painting, and the perspective was like you're looking up into the sky, and the trees were kind of like um, framing it nicely and, and kind of circling. It was yeah, really cool, really really cool. All right, so let's put some of the highlight on this tree here. So the highlight's gonna go, again, on the inside. <laughs> again, trying to, so uniform. Okay. The strokes are so similar, I have to try to like change them up. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. I love this so much. All right, so I am gonna put a few more, um, huh! totally touched with the green, no! Okay, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna put in another colorful tree in here. I think it needs one. I don't know if I'm gonna do another stem. I am gonna put a stem in, I think. Stem, Ugh, trunk. I'm gonna put one in though. I'm gonna put one in like right here. Like that. And then I'm gonna put in colors. Put in some more leaves right there. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause I want to. I think it needs it. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put in some of the pink in. this one okay let's get some orange going kind of light 
yellow again. So same thing that we just we did with the uh, other leaves, but I'm just gonna quickly put in another Melissa and putting in that other additional tree for fun sake. Yeah, cover up my my touched it with green. That works. Ah. <laughs> Nice. So pretty. Okay, there we go. All right, so I think, I think I'm pretty much done. But when you feel that way, if you're like, all right, I have all the elements um, and I think I'm done, just take a moment and just like look at it, look away from it, get, get away from it and like look from a distance. And just see if there's anything that either doesn't look right or feel right or you want to, if there's anything you just kind of want to touch with it. So like when I saw that, I was like, yeah, it's kind of weirdly empty. I'm going to put another tree in. I'm happy with that tree. I think it's cool. Um, so I'm good with that. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other elements maybe. But no, I think we're good. Yeah. That was super fun. Awesome. So yeah, so I'm going to um, just sign it, which I always forget to do. You will find most of my paintings without signatures or initials, I should say. I don't really like put my full signature on the painting, but I'm just going to put L M right there. There we go. And that's me. All right. So there we go. So I hope you have all had a, I'm gonna grab, grab you from here. Ah! So I hope you guys have all had a fantastic afternoon. I really enjoyed painting this and I hope you did too. Um, it's so pretty. It's such a pretty picture. Right? So yeah, so I definitely, um, I can't wait to see yours and see how, um, what you guys did, if you guys changed anything up or made it your own in any other ways. Um, I am thinking too, like a lot of the sky, I could have actually put a bit more of those lines in it to make it look more with that Van Gogh feel, like more specific stroke lines. I don't think I'm going to do that at this point, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited to see your paintings. So please, please share them. Um, Carol says put a green or pink frame. Yeah, I agree. Something like that would really like make it pop and look so pretty. Um, so thank you guys for this afternoon. Um, just so you know, on Tuesday, I'm going to be, um, letting you guys know about a slight change on timing for the classes. So I am back to work, which is a, which is good overall. <laughs> Um, but it does mean I'm going to be working on Saturdays, so I'm going to be changing when I do my lives, but I'll let you guys know on Tuesday as to, um, what that looks like. Um, but I am still going to be doing a free weekly live every week, obviously. Um, so yeah, so I'll still see you. And so if, if this still works at a good time for you, you can still watch one of my videos or the live that I do, um, in the week. And then you can watch it on the Saturday for works for you. Otherwise you can join me. Um, live at my new time um, when I decide that. <laughs> All right, guys, have a fantastic rest of your Saturday and a great weekend. Um, thank you so much again for joining me. Bye, everyone.